Yay. Perfect. Thank you, Maria. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for joining us. For those who I don't know, my name is Dr. Kelly Dries. I am the Executive Director for the Office of Career and Professional Development, otherwise known as the OCPD. We wanted to start this session today by recognizing all of what you are managing in this current climate that we all are managing in this current climate. Uh, it's been declared that the US has officially entered a recession brought on by the global pandemic. Horrific murders at the hands of police and individuals filled with hate continue to plague our black communities. This epic moment of adversity makes career development feel secondary to these issues. So where does this fall, fit into the dialogue of, of today and what we're gonna talk about? None of what's occurring today in the world can be separated from career and the topic of career. Professional development is an integral part of ending the economic disparities that impact black communities as a result of racism. It is essential in recovering from the ruinous effects of the layoffs in this current recession. The series is only one piece in the fight for equity, recovery, and betterment. We want you to know that you are not alone in this journey. We are here to help you get a plan, review your resume, and take on that job search. And we are glad that you are here with us today to partake in this session to talk about some of that. Today we are joined by Maria Kozlov, a U of R proud alum. Maria currently leads Hawthorne Advertising's Human Resources and Administration Department, managing all operational human resources functions focused on people, talent, and culture. She collaborates with the leadership team and managers to oversee people operations, organizational planning, compliance and systems integrations. With more than 10 years of experience in HR and operations, she takes a strategic approach to optimize business performance and maximize revenue through the company's most important asset, its people. Prior to joining Hawthorne Advertising, Maria was a key HR leader in recruitment, people operations, talent management, employee engagement, employee relations, and employment law with Gavin DeBecker and Associates and the LA Film School. She has a master's in business management from the University of Redlands, a bachelor of arts in sociology and psychology from UC Santa Barbara, and a human resources management certificate from UCLA. She is also a career coach and a mentor for Arch and is an active volunteer for Susan G. Coleman, raising over $16,000 personally since 2012. With that wonderful introduction of a wonderful human, I'll turn it over to Maria to take it from here. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, gonna be hard to follow everything that you just said. Um, it was very well said, everything that you just discussed about the pandemic and the state of our, our country and everything. Uh, but I'm, I'm really happy to be here with you guys to just share just even a little bit and, and hope to kind of brighten up your day and maybe teach you something you didn't already know. So again, thank you for that and the wonderful intro. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to yet, uh, please use the chat function to kind of introduce yourself. Tell us a little bit about your experience with LinkedIn and then how you're feeling going into today's session. Um, so let's get started. So this is our agenda for today. So we'll get to know LinkedIn, why LinkedIn, uh, why it's important. Uh, I can talk about this for about a month if we need to. Um, your profile, your personal brand, and then we can talk about how we can increase engagement and visibility and how to build your network, which is really the most important part of uh, LinkedIn. I'll take some questions in between a few segments, but then I'll also, you know, start doing, we'll do, we'll end with a Q&A towards the end. So if you have any specific questions, save those towards the end. Uh, but if you have any that pop up during each section, I'll stop there and we'll go from there as well. So let's first talk about why having LinkedIn is, oh, excuse me, just get this chat. Uh, why having LinkedIn, a LinkedIn profile is important. Um, so this, this uh, graph was, is, was taken from LinkedIn and one of their uh, sister sites, but LinkedIn currently has about 690 million members, 50 million companies are on LinkedIn, uh, a million plus jobs are posted on LinkedIn, uh, 36,000 skills, 90,000 plus schools, and 280 billion plus uh, information slash knowledge, uh, thought leadership on LinkedIn. So it's a huge community of professionals, networking, 
communicating, uh, building uh, relationships, uh, building uh, ways to kind of increase awareness about their corporations, about themselves, and so on. Let's talk about the difference between a profile and a resume. First off, does anyone, can anyone tell me briefly what is a, what is the difference between a profile and a LinkedIn profile and a resume? Um, in my, hi, I'm Liz. Hi, Liz, thank you for volunteering. Uh, in my opinion, I feel LinkedIn has more flexibility in describe your own story and, uh, Tailoring your uh, past working experience has more space and more, yeah, flexibility. That's exactly right. And thank you so much. And also on that note, if, if uh, to those that are not on camera, if you can get on camera, that'd be great. So we all can kind of see each other and talk to one another as, as much as we can virtually. <laughs> uh, but Liz, you're absolutely right. So your resume is kind of like, you know, a bullet pointed, abbreviated version of your skills, of your hard skills for the most part. Uh, a, a LinkedIn profile shares your personality, uh, shares your brand, uh, and really talks about you as an individual. Uh, and we'll get into that uh, a little bit more throughout this conversation. Uh, but really it, you know, it, this bullet point here, the first one, it speaks to all potential employers, not just a single one. So typically when you're submitting a resume, you're, you're likely catering it to a specific job, uh, specific industry, and sometimes even a specific company versus your profile is an opportunity to really talk about yourself generally and relate to a lot of different places, a lot of different people, a lot of different uh, industries, right? It goes into more details with skills, projects, interests, and certifications. Again, your resume, you know, best practice is one to two pages. So you often, you know, don't have that summary um, that's two to three paragraphs. Now on LinkedIn, you're free to make a, as a summary that's fairly long. And in fact, that's encouraged because what LinkedIn focuses on are keywords, or specific keywords. And we'll get into that in just one second as well. And then um, also allows others, other professionals and employers to interact, learn, and contact you. Again, this is your opportunity to show off your brand, who you are, your personality, something you otherwise wouldn't be able to do on a resume. In addition, um, and one of the kind of most important components is that it contains recommendations and endorsements. So, uh, you know, in the past, when you've submitted a resume, people have asked, oh, can I have a list of references as well? This kind of adds to it, right? Because if you have a past employer, uh, a colleague, a professor, anyone that you've worked with or interacted with on a professional level can endorse you on a specific skill, well, that's something that you can already provide to a potential employer because you can say, well, look at all of these recommendations I've received on LinkedIn for various skill sets that I have. So it kind of replaces the reference request that most employers ask for. Uh, and while that's still prevalent, uh, I think this is the more uh, up-to-date type of reference request that uh, you can provide. And it actually tells a bigger story, a better story, uh, because it talks about individual um, aspects, individual contributions that happened in that moment versus somebody calling a reference from that you worked with maybe 20 years ago. Okay, steps to a successful profile and one that tells a story. Step one, adding a photo, right? Uh, number one step, this is the best way to get obviously to get recognized, right? Um, and steps to a photo and a successful photo is uh, that it should be in focus, simple background, and your face should take up the majority of the frame. I highly recommend that you get a professional headshot. Um, now I know those can be fairly expensive uh, and you can do one, a great one on your cell phone, on your iPhone, on your smartphone. Uh, but if you are in the position to do that, I highly recommend that you get one. Um, mostly because, and you can see some of these stats here, and this is taken directly from LinkedIn, um, members with a photo get up to nine times more connection requests, 21 
times more professional views, uh, sorry, profile views, and 36 uh, more messages. Um, so it's, it's a great way to establish yourself from your competition and again, make yourself more visible on the platform. Next step would be a captivating headline. And I'm not saying mine is extremely captivating, but I'm just showing you my example uh, since I'm the, I'm the speaker here. So the headline, it was recently stated, uh, matter of fact, I think about a week ago or sometime this week, uh, I believe LinkedIn put this out, that the headline is the single most important component of your profile. Because again, yes, you have your, your, your picture, but your profile, uh, I'm sorry, your headline has all of the key words and the key words are significant, specifically if you're hoping for recruiters to find you and for recruiters uh, to search individuals that they're looking to hire or prospects that, that they're looking to hire, they look for specific keywords. So it is recommended that on your profile, and as if you'll see, I'll skip to the bottom, that I put an asterisk over uh, open to opportunities. There's so many people on LinkedIn whose headline says open to opportunities. Don't do that. And the reason because it's not recommended that you do that is because no one is searching for open opportunities. So if you're looking to be in HR, and I'll say that because that's my experience. That's the information that you put on your headline. So you, you put whether or not you're working in the industry now, uh, or you're looking for another, or, or you're looking for a role, you're putting in your industry, there's a divider, you're putting in your role, and you're putting in your skills and passion. And again, what you want to do, your interests, what industry you're working in, or work wanting to work for again it tells that story and it differentiates you from someone else i have uh, an interesting story when we were hiring for my previous role we were hiring for a general counsel and you know those resumes are extremely generic in the sense of like oh i went to this law school and i did this and of course i looked everyone up on their linkedin and one of the girls uh on on her headline said 90s r and uh, expert and I consider myself a 90s r and expert so I immediately was drawn to her profile and called her first she ended up being the one that was hired uh, not because I wasn't the one that had the final say on that she was reporting to the president but something about her profile and that specific verbiage caught my eye because I was the hiring recruiter slash HR person at the time reviewing resumes, looked at her LinkedIn and that made her stand out. So random example, but, uh, but again, another reason why the headline and really building your brand and explaining your brand is important. Any questions about that? And I don't know, I can't see the chat. So um, Maria, I'll go ahead and uh... I was fielding some of the questions in the chat. So one that came up that I think was a really great question was um, with the headshot image, uh, what uh, should be considered in regards to bias issues such as race, size, gender, uh, et cetera? I mean, that's a great question. Um, you mean as far as from the individual themselves or from the, or from the hiring manager, HR professional side, if you can elaborate. Um, uh, the person who asked that question, if you want to elaborate either video or drop your, ch um, your question in the chat, um, we can expand on the hiring side. Uh, nothing from my experience, nothing. It's just a matter of, uh, this is who you are and it explains your story. So there's not, there's never been, I mean, you know, I can't speak for every hiring manager, but as far as, you know, for us and for my experience and for everything I've done in, in the 12 years that I've looked at resumes and, you know, LinkedIn profiles, it hasn't swayed anyone, my decision, any one way, uh, not the profile. If anything, it was the, the summary, the experience, again, the headline, 
Uh, but you know, the, the profile photo is there to make you stand out and make you seem more professional. So the only recommendation on that would be, again, that, that headshot, get that professional headshot versus it being a photo of maybe um, you and your friends or maybe a photo a bit f further away. Again, all depends on what type of brand that you want to put out there. But as far as what that's done in the hiring, um, I don't, I don't want to say that no company has ever looked at that and said, oh, I don't want to hire this. Uh, their race doesn't matter to me. I'm not looking at that. Uh, that would be naive of me to say, but that would be, um, that wouldn't be my, it wouldn't be something that would be a disqualifying factor for it anyway. It was just, just a matter of, again, expressing your brand and showing who you are. And again, we can talk, we can talk about that if, uh, if we have additional questions about that towards the end too. I, th I think, if I may, I think one of the real concerns is when you show a photograph, you're showing the age, you're showing the gender, you are showing the race. Now, good HR professionals are going to look at the resume first. So if I'm recruiting, I'm generally look, going through Indeed resumes. I want to see if they have the skills, knowledge, and ability to do the job. And then I may look at LinkedIn and see if it matches the resume because that's where you tell people are lying sometimes. Mm -hmm. uh, but you do need to you know, it, it is a concern. It's out there. It's just really hard to prove. Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Um, and I think there's a reason why not everyone is so open on LinkedIn. Uh, maybe they don't want to feel judged, right? They don't want to say, well, I don't want you to judge me based on what I look like uh, or how old I am. I want you to judge me in my experience and whether or not I'm, uh, you know, available for this role and whether or not you think I would do a great job in this role, regardless of what I look like or my age. Uh, but again, so with hiring decisions, again, that, that is a separate topic. Uh, you know, if someone is looking to optimize their LinkedIn profile, then a recommendation would be to add your photo and to, you know, again, build your brand. But if you're, if you don't want to use that as a way to deter hiring managers from, you know, basing hi your hiring decisions on what you look like or your age, then that's, you know, kind of a separate conversation. Uh, one more question, um, uh, Maria, that came in is uh, someone said, wouldn't, um, wouldn't, uh, would it, I'm not sure if I, if I got their question correct. Um, um, would it be considered unprofessional um, to have part of the headline differentiating or fun? Um, I think what they're trying to say is, is there any room for having uh, any kind of playfulness in that headline um, component? There definitely is. There definitely is. Uh, and just as I had mentioned with the, the previous uh, employee that we hired where she, where she said, you know, 90s R&B expert. Again, it's, it's, it shows a part of your personality. I think if you just make it that one uh, sentence, that's fine. I think if you do anything more than that, that can kind of deter from your actual skill set. Uh, and uh, we'll take one. We'll take one more if you don't mind. Um, yeah. Um, they just want to know uh, how many keywords uh, particularly should be put on the headline. Uh, is there a limit to that? So I would limit to three or four. Uh, so I have three different, or I'm sorry, I have four different components. So I have human resources, resources executive, people and talent leader, career coach, and director of HR uh, at Hawthorne. So I think if you keep it to three to four, uh, not three to four words, uh, but three to four uh, differentiators of roles, industries, and skills. I think that that's plenty. Anything more than that can get lost in the shuffle and then can kind of stop the hiring manager from reviewing it. Great, great, thank you. Okay, so next step to uh, optimizing your profile. You know, we've, we've covered the photo. We've covered the headline. Uh, this would be the summary component. So this is kind of like your elevator pitch. Something like a cover letter would be. But again, not so much specific to one job, uh, but general. So your summary is the best place for you to communicate your professional brand, put in your own spin on your experience, and uh, 
the easiest formula we, uh, I would recommend and the individuals on LinkedIn as well is one to two sentences about who you are, three to five sentences about your experience, skills and passions, and about your goals. Uh, so in my summary, uh, you know, I basically talk about what I've done for the last 12 years, uh, what aspects of HR, you know, I've worked on, what I currently do, uh, what I did in my last few roles, and then what I'm passionate about, which is career coaching. Again, you know, I do talk about, I do add a little blurb about me being a music en enthusiast, because again, that's kind of like my, my personality, um, you know, coming to life because it's, it's your way, and especially in this virtual world that we're in, you know, we're not doing that many interactions face-to-face, -face, so it's a great way for someone to get to know you prior to, to chatting with you. Um, next step would be adding your work and volunteer experience. So again, as you can see the stats below, the more information you have, the, the higher likelihood that you'll have more connection requests, your profile, more profile views, more messages. So in addition to talking about your experience, as you can see on the blurb, um, you know, so-and-so was vice president of global sales. Right below that, they talk about what ABC Sales Technologies does. And right underneath that, they talk about what their, their actual experience in that role has been. So again, all about keywords, uh, this person does sales. So let's talk about what types of sales. Um, important for a sales job that we talk numbers. We quantify all of our successes because again, and that actually is going back to headlines. If you're in the sales industry, you definitely want to quantify your successes in that headline. Because if someone's looking you up in that search box and they want to, that is something that will attract a recruiter and or hiring manager because they will see, oh, so-and-so has uh, delivered $20 million in revenue, uh, let's click on their page. Because they're looking at hundreds of applic or um, profiles, they're sorting through with specific keywords, let's quantify our successes to, be, to have better visibility. Skills endorsements and recommendations, uh, this is one of my, my favorite uh, things on LinkedIn. Um, you add your own skills. I think you have the opportunity, I could be wrong, but I think you have the opportunity to add about 40. And then you have your connections, your network to endorse you for those skills. Um, and then you can present your top three skills on there for people to see. So now it doesn't have to be the top three skills that you have been endorsed the highest for, that you have the highest number of endorsements on. It can literally be any top skills that you'd like to showcase. And again, uh, I think an another important uh, differentiator between you and someone else vying for that same role or someone, you know, a recruiter that's looking for someone else to scroll down and see, oh, so-and-so actually was ranked really high on this aspect as well. In my profile specifically, uh, you know, I have human resources, management, and recruitment. I actually have a pretty high score on marketing because I used to do some internet marketing back in my previous life, but it's not more important, it's not one that I want to use as a differentiator right now, so I didn't put it as my top skill. Because again, I wanted those three skills, the HR, recruitment, and, uh, as, and management to be the ones I'm, I'm noticed for most. Uh, so that's the skills part. Now recommendations. I highly, highly, highly encourage um, all of you, everyone, to get asked for recommendations from colleagues, from past colleagues, from ins instructors, if you haven't had uh, you know, work experience thus far, professors, anyone. Again, this is, it takes three seconds to ask. Uh, if people say no, they say no, but if they say yes and write you an amazing recommendation, A, that'll make you feel good uh, and likely want to return the favor. And B, again, that's that visibility. And for potential employers when they're looking, or even hiring managers, when they're looking at different profiles, they're going to say, oh, so-and-so was a team player and we see that that's a common trend for so-and-so. Maybe we definitely want them on the team. Or so-and-so was great at working uh, through this task we want them on the team. Um, and again, important that you get a past colleague, 
uh, a professional endorsement because you don't want it to later seem like, oh, I've got, I've asked a bunch of friends to endorse me. And, you know, you can, you can kind of tell when it becomes uh, more personal rather than professional. Any questions on, on these couple areas? Maybe not a question, Maria, but a, a comment. Um, for those of you who are on the call and have a Handshake account, with it, if you are a student, you automatically have a Handshake account. If you're a staff member or alumni, you can gain access to one. You just have to let us know. Um, we have a, a resource in our Handshake resources that actually provides information on how you can ask for a LinkedIn recommendation. Um, from somebody that you work with so that you can actually out, outreach and ask for one of those. So that is a resource we have available um, and we'll make sure that we send it out in the in the follow up email as well. Oh, that's great. That's great. And also on LinkedIn, when you click on recommendation, it kind of drafts one for you as well. Uh, so there's a gener generic draft that you can use. Obviously, I highly recommend you personalize everything that you send out because the person on the other end will know that it's pretty generic. So but I'm glad that you guys have that um, to offer to students. Okay. It, it um, might be worth mentioning that yeah. the endorsements are, I mean, I've had people like email me and say, hey, can you endorse me for this or that? And it's like people I, I don't even know. Mm -hmm. And the endorsements I think have gotten a little out of hand. It's kind of a mutual admiration society at some point. Mm -hmm. uh, I put a lot more value into recommendations because somebody had to actually rub two thoughts together. They had to come up with complete sentences. So I, I've known some recruiters that won't even consider a candidate unless they have at least 10 recommendations. Because mm -hmm. mm -hmm. it's easy to finagle two or three out of your friends. Mm -hmm. But if you've actually worked with people and done, you know, interacted, then it actually shows that you have something of a network yourself. I 100% agree, Kevin. And thank you for bringing that up. I actually just had somebody add me on LinkedIn who I've never met and we'll, we'll get to that part, part in a little bit uh, and immediately uh, endorsed me for five different skills and I a thought oh great thanks but B how do you know you don't you don't know who I am um, it's still it's it still looks good right but it's like you said Kevin it is now becoming a oh well if I if I endorse them, then she'll probably endorse me back and that'll help grow my network and grow my visibility so 100% agree, recommendations are significantly uh, more important in the sense that it tells a bigger story and somebody you don't know is not really gonna spend, uh, you know, writing two, three paragraphs about you if they don't, they don't, if they can't talk to your skill set. Well, and it's, it's also important to note that sometimes you gotta give to get. Mm -hmm. And so when you go to give recommendations of others, I mean, if you think about people that have been a positive force in your life, that really helped you out, that were a great manager, you can write a lovely recommendation for them. And then LinkedIn will say, hey, so-and-so just wrote a recommendation for you. Would you like to post it on your profile? You're like, sure. And then it's like, hey, how would you like to write one for them? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, That's it, one way to get them is to give them. Exactly. Exactly. Um, and again, and, and feel free and don't write one for someone just to write one either. If you don't, if you don't believe, if you don't believe that they're actually good at something and you don't want to put your name on that either, because you don't want to later be the person responsible for, uh, well, hey, so-and-so gave this great recommendation on so-and-so, but they ended up being an awful employee. So that can also come back to you as well. Um, so yeah, I mean, just be honest. And, you know, there's been plenty of times where people have asked me to write one and I, I speak to their strengths, uh, specific strengths, but I don't, you know, necessarily talk about the things that they want me to say. If I, A, haven't had the experience, uh, their experience, I can't talk, speak to their experience, or maybe that they, have, those were more so their weaknesses and I don't want to highlight that for them. So there's, there's a strategy to that as well. All right, so how to be seen and heard. Uh, build your professional network. I mean, that's pretty much what we've been, we've been talking about here, you know? Build your professional network, discover existing connections, search for new connections, and expand your network strategically. And um, also just a side note, Thomas, I, I sent Thomas a link to these slides specifically. Um, that I took these slides from a, 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 a PDF that LinkedIn put out. Uh, some months ago. So you guys will have access to all of that if, if you need to go back to see it. 
So the power of networking. So did you know that 50% of hires result from a personal connection? Uh, that is very true now, especially in our virtual world. The power of networking and connecting and building your, uh, you know, communication with individuals that you've never even spoken to is so important is extremely extremely important so you know you have your i don't know if to those that aren't available or that familiar with linkedin um you know when you log in you have your first degree connections and then your second degree connections are those that are connected to your first degree so you're somewhat connected to them as well on that second degree level and then third degree so on and so on so as you can see everyone is connected in some sense whether it be first degree or second degree um i I highly recommend expanding that network, uh, you know, reaching out to that second degree individual that you want to be connected to and either just adding them or sending them a quick message and saying, hey, so and so I noticed that you we have these many people in common, I'd like to expand on my professional network and would like to add you to to it. Um, you know, I, I get a lot of sales pitches that way, uh, which have I'm sure a lot of people, a lot of you get those as well. Uh, they're not the best um, and it's not the best way to sell yourself. We'll get into that a little bit, but I think nothing wrong with wanting to expand your network, especially if it's in the industry you want to work in, in the industry you want to, or the industry you want to learn more about. If so-and-so works for a company you're interested or a company that you want to learn more about, I think nothing wrong with expanding your network and asking someone uh, if, if you can join their network. You're not selling them anything or not, I hope not. Uh, you're just trying to build that network and build that communication with them. Um, this is how, this is an example that that site presented as a way to customize your invitation. Hi, Dan, I found your profile through our mutual connection, uh, Rob. I'm currently exploring career paths in the technology industry and admire your experience. I would love to join your network. It's very generic. Uh, you can definitely personalize. Hey, so and so, I noticed that you, we, you and I both have the same connection in, or you and I both know so and so. I'm really interested in. I just thought of the Walt Disney Company, and I noticed that you've been working there for 15 years. Love to add you to my network because I, I would love to hear more about you know what Disney's been up to the last year or so. Anything like that. Again, great way to learn about possible, uh, meet possible colleagues, uh, you know, just meet friends, it, great opportunities to network and then build relationships essentially. Any questions before we get into this? Any questions about building and expanding on your network? Sounds good, cool. Move on. Okay, so adding a piece to your voice on LinkedIn. So this is a, a wonderful way to build engagement and grow your visibility. So we've talked about your profile, how to build your profile, make sure you have the appropriate keyword so that when people look you up, your name pops up first. But in addition to that, uh, let's talk about your engagement and how you can get a name for yourself as quote unquote thought leader if that's if that's your if that's your goal um, so sharing updates and publishing posts are probably one of the best ways to become this expert on linkedin uh, or to get visibility to get noticed again to to network with the people the right people that you want to network with and again getting your name out there so updates uh, is where you share links, articles, images, quotes, or anything else your followers might be interested. So for HR, for me specifically, uh, you know, with, with HR has been <laughs> insane <laughs> for the last three months. And anyone in HR who's here today will, would probably agree that, you know, with so much going on and, and it, quickly getting everybody to work remote and new policies, new sick leave and paid leave and, layoffs and unemployment and constant changes going on different bills and getting passed almost you know every few hours i 
those were my updates. I would constantly, you know, send different updates on new laws that were passed. And I have, I've grown my HR network for that specific reason is because I want to stay connected to that world and see what's happening in that world uh, in different countries and different states. Because obviously, if anyone in HR will know, different states have different rules, different counties have different rules, different cities have different rules. So it's a great way to stay in touch. It's a great way to build your network. Uh, again, also, just news wise, uh, you know, there's so media has, I mean, we can go up, that's a separate conversation, but a, a lot is going on in the media with, you know, different things and what's true, what's not. This is a great way, again, it's, you know, you can fact check yourself, but this is a great way to share different things. I also highly recommend on this, this specific part to hashtag. And again, now this is only if you're looking to become that thought leader to, to add your voice to LinkedIn. Anytime you add a hashtag, and similar to you know Instagram or Facebook, anytime you add a hashtag, anytime that someone clicks on that specific hashtag, your update pops up. So this is again important for your specific industry. So for HR, you know, anytime I post an update uh, for a, a new law or any engagement or any any virtual, um, like my company, we've been doing virtual uh, trivia. Uh, every few weeks to keep that engagement going. So I would hashtag engagement or HR and I would get other professionals in the industry to chime in and talk about what they've been doing with their company. And again, this is a great way to talk, talk through your industry and see what everyone else is doing. Um, so that's, those are updates. Now, as far as publishing posts, um, you know, these are topics that matter to you. Um, this is, you're basically publishing an article that you're, you're an expert in and you want to, again, get your voice out there. So there's been many people who talk about, um, you know, managing change or mental health. Uh, and, you know, the stigma, unfortunately, there's still some stigma behind mental health, but that's, that's what we're all talking about right now. So I've had a lot of colleagues and individuals that I'm connected to write posts on their experience or their or something that they've studied and learned through their education or or career and again another way to get your voice out there but again building your brand talking about what you can do what you're interested in and what your thoughts are um, so this is how pretty much how you share a status update um, fairly to the point you click on your profile um, you talk about what you want to talk about and you add a hashtag and sometimes when you add the hashtag uh, right next to it it shows you recommended hashtags and again not required to do this at all but another way to get that engagement going uh, to get that visibility out there so these are some uh, best practices for sharing updates and again thomas will will share the link with you guys if he hasn't already all of this is on here you know share your authentic voice that's very important to build your own personal brand post frequently start a conversation uh, or share your point of view include rich media to increase engagement and create an opportunity for reciprocity it's also important and i i, I should note that i've if again, if you're looking to increase engagement and visibility and your network, I highly recommend following a lot of these thought leaders that already are on LinkedIn with a huge following. Uh, again, you, you meet a lot of people that way, you can build your network and anytime you comment on their post, everyone that they're connected to sees your comment. So again, an, another way to kind of stay connected through, through this, uh, through this world of LinkedIn is to comment on one another's posts, you know, post frequently, but also have that authentic, unique voice uh, that in, in, in your, your mind and what you feel. Again, stay away from, you know, political conversations, keep it professional, stay away from personal conversations as well. Again, there's a lot of that out there, but again, uh, you don't, you don't want the negative side of, of, of too much engagement to kind of, be your, your downfall in this as well. Um, and there, there's a fine line there, especially with everything that's going on now. But again, uh, I highly recommend if, you, if you're sharing updates and communicating with other thought leaders, keep it strictly professional on the topic itself. And, and think about whether or not what you're saying is going to be a benefit to you or a detriment to you. 
So content best practices, uh, the fundamentals are more important than ever. Never lose sight of your audience. Again, that's kind of make sure that what you're talking about doesn't offend anyone, especially right now. Just please be cognizant of that. Uh, you know, demonstrate your trustworthiness, be supportive, be human, listen, be mindful of tone, timing, and delivery. Um, so getting your name out there. So this, these are just kind of actually some, some actually prior, prior to getting to this, any questions, concerns, comments, suggestions? All right, so something we've already talked about, but I wanna uh, you know, address again. If you haven't already, uh, if your profile is private and you're looking to increase engagement and you know, again, optimizing your LinkedIn, put it to public. Make sure that your, your name, last name is visible. Again, only if you want to, uh, but this is the best way to have recruiters and hiring managers find you. Um, let recruiters know you're open to opportunities. A lot of people who are on LinkedIn uh, or don't know much about LinkedIn don't realize that there's that option. So if you are on LinkedIn just to network, you're not looking for a job, you don't need to have that on. But if you're on LinkedIn to find that next career uh, or just you know the next opportunity, there's an option um, through your settings that will allow you to let recruiters or anyone on LinkedIn know you're open for opportunities. This is extremely important because as recruiters, uh, most recruiters have different, different components of LinkedIn, different access to LinkedIn. So some recruiters have what's called a recruiter seat, which would allow them to search again for specific keywords and specifically for those who are open to opportunities. So that will allow recruiters to find you message you about their opportunity uh, and because and they're doing that because you've let them know that you're open to it follow companies you're interested in working with or for we, we touched on that a little bit briefly uh, again this is important to uh, learn more about that company the culture see if it's everything that you thought it was going to be uh, or maybe you followed this company for so long you've always wanted to work there and then you start realizing from their posts and from some of the people that work there that you that it's not at all what you thought it was going to be and maybe you don't want to work for them anymore um, follow groups that you share common interests with this is huge for networking again this is huge for hr specifically i'll use my example there's so many hr communities out there um, that really help each other out and I, I love getting requests from people that say hey um you're a fellow hr you know individual let's connect great that's all and i've said the same thing to many out there and, and it we i've i've been able to gain a lot of professional context that way uh, just by simply again connecting with those specific people within those groups who i share a common interest with uh, we touched on this earlier a little bit if you're lacking work experience seek recommendations from instructors it's the same thing, um, you know, just because you haven't had a, you know, real job, quote unquote, it doesn't mean that you can't get a professional recommendation. Uh, because as you all know, as students, um, it's, it's, it's hard. <laughs> it's not easy to go to school, uh, you know, complete school, especially if some of you getting your master's, your PhD, like it, it's not an easy task. So I think it's, it speaks volumes when you have an instructor give uh, a solid recommendation from especially if you uh, worked full-time and went to school full-time. That to me says time management, that to me just says dedication. So all of that is extremely important. Uh, again, we, we talked about this a little bit, uh, or a lot actually, but be specific in your keywords uh, with your, within your headline and your summary. Hashtags, hashtags, uh, keep it professional, not personal. It's not like uh, other social media sites. Um, and most important, be proactive. Um, I have a question for whoever is interested or, or is able to uh, provide some feedback, but when you find a job opening you're interested in on LinkedIn, what do you do? If anyone's brave enough to talk about it. Well, uh, I'll chime in. If, if I see a job opening that I'm interested in, I'm going to try to find out who the hiring manager is if I can through LinkedIn. And if I'm not already connected with them, I will probably send them a connection request. But in the request, I will say, I understand you're looking for an XYZ. 
I would love to learn what I could do to increase my chances of landing an interview. Do you have any advice or insights that you might share? Now, nobody likes to be asked for a job, but if you ask them for advice, it's like, well, I'd love to give you my advice. I mean, people are kind of flattered that they were asked. So that's, that's certainly one way of uh, doing it when you're in an active job search. That's absolutely right. And thank you for sharing that, Kevin. You know, many people don't realize that sometimes the hiring manager's information is right there because they're the ones that posted the job. So it's, a, it's as simple as clicking on their LinkedIn page, sending them a message and saying, hey, saw the job posting. I'm really interested. Uh, or can you tell me a little bit more about this? Or I applied this way, just letting you know I'm interested. Again, that one extra step, because for so many jobs, and I imagine now with you know, the unemployment rate as high as it is, uh, we actually, had, at, my, at my role, we had, uh, we had to fill a job pretty immediately because we had someone resign. And I had received so many resumes. I mean, for people from completely different industries, nobody had the experience that, you know, it wasn't anything at all that I was looking for, but so many people wanted and needed a job that I was flooded with thousands of resumes. And then I had five to 10 people reach out to me directly on LinkedIn because they saw that I was the hiring manager. Uh, they wanted to talk to me or they wanted to learn, give a little tidbit of, uh, information about themselves or just to let me know, hey, FYI, you must have received a thousand applications for this role, just letting you know I am so-and-so and I've applied. And so now I know that I'm going to look them up specifically and look at, look at their resume first because you have to start somewhere. Uh, okay, so what, you, what you're doing when you're, when you're interested in a job that's posted on LinkedIn, you follow the company. Follow the company immediately on LinkedIn, start liking their posts, especially if it's a small organization. Times at small organizations, like my organization, we have about 66, 66 employees. So I'm very much involved in not just the job posting on social media, but I'm involved in the marketing and advertising component of it as well. So I see who likes our posts. So if I see someone that's applied for the job also like our posts, that just shows me that they're dedicated and they're super into the, the company. So you're following the company, you're learning the, the culture, and then is there a hiring manager attached to the ad? If there is, message them. Find an executive that works for the company, message them. Again, you know, you don't want to, hey, I want this job so bad, hire me. You know, there's, there's ways to structure that, and we'll talk about that in just a little bit. Another great thing to do would be to find a potential colleague especially, you know, one in a, the same department. If you're, if you're looking to, for an HR coordinator position and you find another HR coordinator who currently works there, message them. It can't hurt. If they don't respond, if they ignore you, you've literally not hurt any chance there because they otherwise probably weren't going to call you anyway. But if they respond to you, you're that much closer to possibly getting that phone call or that email. Uh, they may say, hey, so-and-so has reached out to me on LinkedIn. Have you seen their resume? They're really interested. You just never know what those opportunities will bring you. So how do you structure those messages? Um, this is interesting because there's, I don't, I don't believe that there's any one way. Uh, I think it's very unique to the position and I think very unique to you. Uh, but what I do know is less is more. Uh, anytime you send a four paragraph message it'll likely, at least I can tell you from my experience, not be, I don't want to say ignored, but, it, but it, it's going to be too long. It's going to be too long. No one's going to have the time to really read through it, especially if you're a, a hiring manager or a, an executive with a lot of followers that already get a lot of sales pitches. It's going to seem like a sales pitch. Um, you know, keep it short and to the point, just like how Kevin said. And I'll talk in the next slide, I'll talk about my experience with doing that. Uh, do not oversell yourself or your services or use words like, hey, hire me because I'm a fantastic employee. I mean, everyone thinks that about themselves, right? For the most part, again, you want to showcase quantifiable <laughs> data if you're applying for a sales role, uh, but also just, hey, I've been following this company for quite some time. The CEO blank is very inspirational because blank and I would really love the opportunity to learn more about this, this role. 
are you available for a quick chat? Do your research, do your research on the executive. This does take, you know, it's, it's not that direct, it does take some time, but I think it's very important and impressive if, uh, you know, if I was an executive and received a message like that and say, oh, whoa, so-and-so knows that I went to uh, University of Redlands and studied business management and they're, you know, they're impressed with A, B, and C that I've done and they want to talk about this job, I'll say, oh, yeah, maybe it's a little kiss ass, but, but they've also done their research, right? They're very interested, they're motivated, they're dedicated. So be persistent, uh, persistent. And if there's no response to your initial message, follow up. Uh, so let me talk to you about my experience. Um, this current role that I have, I have because of LinkedIn. A uh, recruiter, an outside recruiter, not one working for Hawthorne. Uh, they were they were looking for an HR director and they hired a outside recruiter to help them find one. And he found me based on on LinkedIn, my keywords, my title, and my area of expertise. Um, I that job posting was not even available. And the reason why it wasn't available was because they currently had an HR director there that they were looking to let go of. So they didn't want to place the ad with the person still there. Uh, unfortunately, that's a common practice. Um, but I would have never known about that role uh, had that recruiter not reached out to me. How did he find me? And I asked him this. He said that when he looked up HR director, my name was top 10 in his list. And he narrowed it down to city, narrowed it down to a few other um, you know, selections that he had. And that's because I had and I could be wrong, but I think I had 14 recommendations on there. Uh, I had uh, three different jobs that had a big, big summary of underneath explaining what I did and what those roles were. He liked that I had different industries in there because I've worked for a school. So I worked in education, I worked in security, and now I work in advertising. Completely different worlds. But again, that variety of, of uh, expertise and industry. And again, he liked the keywords. He liked that I had, that I had networked, that I had posted and had some, you know, thought leadership type things up there on HR and best practices. And so he wanted to reach out to me. Again, had I not had all of that information, he would have probably never found me. Um, so I, my experience, with with uh, Hawthorne was that. Now, another experience that I had was from this other role uh, that I, I, I didn't work for, but I really wanted to interview for. It was for this uh, startup company that was actually 0.3 miles away from my house, which was ideal. It's all I needed to hear. Um, it was for head, so it was for basically president of HR, head of HR. Now, I knew that I had come from a direct senior director of HR role and thought, well, maybe I, you know, they looked for 15 to 20 years of experience, which I did not have. But what I did was I contacted the CEO once with exactly what I said earlier. I said, hi, so-and-so, I'm really impressed with your experience, with how the company has been able to grow in the last year and a half. I can bring this to the table. Uh, these are, this is the stuff I've been working on and this is how I can, uh, I can, you know, be, I can include my expertise to your company, how I can better assist you with your, with your hiring needs. I know that you have hyper expansion. I, I have experience in hyper expansion. I, I'm saying a lot, but I conduced it down to, I can condense it to a paragraph. He didn't respond. Uh, a week later, I followed up hey, just making sure that you saw my message. He didn't respond. I almost quit there and then I thought, I'm gonna say one more thing. And that was, hi, so-and-so. I'm persistent because I'm extremely interested. That's literally all I said. And within seconds, he responded and I had a one-on-one -on -one meeting with him. He said, I was the only one that they met with that was not on a VP level uh, or higher. That they would even that that they would even consider calling it, and um, ultimately, actually, that position is that was in January, and they still haven't filled it. But not the point. I was not qualified experience-wise on resume on paper. They would have not even called me a hundred percent because I've only had at that point ten years of experience in a director, high director, but you know, still director role. 
they would have bypassed my resume 100%. But I was extremely persistent. I didn't harass him. I think one more email would have been too much. But it was that sweet spot of, hey, I, I'm actually really interested. Come, come talk to me. And, and I told him, and I live down the street. So I was there in, in three minutes, you know. Um, again, that's, and ever since that experience, uh, which I thought was really great and what a lot of people probably would never do because they just don't think they can do that. They don't think that they'll be, they'll be perceived or, you know, they'll get a response. That, that gave me a lot of confidence to continue engaging with other people. Um, so that kind of goes to my reach out message, hiring messengers and CEO, add recruiters who specialize in your L and we're right out of time, but add recruiters who specialize in your specific industry. Uh, you know, there's so many recruiters on LinkedIn who hire for a, you know, recruiters hiring for uh, financial analysts, recruiters hire, hiring for accountants, add all of them because you'll see their posting and you'll apply and you already have that connection. Uh, if you're able to uh, buy LinkedIn premium, I believe it's about $20 a month. I highly recommend it. Um, again, it, it gives you a lot of opportunity and a lot more visibility to other people. And it allows you to send messages to people you're not already connected to. And then a side note, um, if, you're, if you're working on, like I'm, a, I'm also a career coach. So if you have that like profession that you're doing consulting on the side, there's also LinkedIn ProFinder, uh, which I actually just learned about six months ago that will allow you to talk about your services and anytime someone requests uh, a consultant, you'll get an email letting you know so-and-so would like, uh, you know, submit your uh, proposal to so-and-so for this job. So there's so many opportunities, again, but really you have to be out there. You have to expand on all of your keywords and you have to really engage and connect to kind of really optimize your, uh, your page as much as possible. Yeah. Any questions? And anything that we didn't get to cover more earlier on in the process that you'd like to address now? Yeah, Maria. I might jump in really quickly just because I know it's time and a lot of folks are starting to leave. So if you have to run, we understand. We'll send out a form after so you can actually submit a question if you had a question that didn't get answered. Um, and then if you can stick around a little bit, I know we had some in the chat. So Thomas, if you want to miss, um, we can at least get to those for those who can stick around. There's an important uh, web webinar series uh, starting at, uh, at one, uh, tough conversations about race. So just be mindful. Thank you. Yes, thank you. That is starting at one o'clock. Um, so we will... Um, any questions that came in, we can scroll through the chat because we did actually, we will get a copy of the chat and we'll make sure that we follow up with folks that had specific questions. And again, the form that we will be sending around with some of the additional resources that Maria shared, uh, we will have an opportunity where you can ask any additional questions and we'll follow back up with you. Um, so let's all maybe give a virtual hand clap for Maria. Thank you so much, Maria, Thank for spending you. time with us today. Of course. And um, hopefully this was helpful and know that we're here in the OCPD to have follow up conversations with you about your LinkedIn or any other job search career search need. Yeah. And if you guys need anything, I'm on LinkedIn. So you can message me and, you know, we can chat about anything or even if you just want to, uh, if you have just some side questions about anything HR related really too. All right. Well, thank you all. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye. Happy trails.